Welcome to What She Said. I'm your host, Lucy Lucroft, a freelance journalist and blogger from London. Each week, I chat to awesome humans about their journey to where they are today, and we share lots of blogging tips and tricks too. You can hear the entire back catalogue, as well as new episodes wherever you listen to podcasts by searching for my name or searching What She Said, or you can go to my website, wanderloose.com. And if you want to come say hi online, I'm at Lucy Lucroft on Instagram or Twitter, or over at my blog, wanderloose.com. Enjoy the show. Hello. Welcome back to what she said. This week, I chat to the dreamy Hannah Bullivant, well, I can't even speak, all about her journey to where she is today as a blogger and stylist extraordinaire. We talk motherhood, self-doubt, and how she's carving a heart-centered, family-focused business, her incredible January book, um, You Need This in Your Life, and how her blog was the turning point for her entire career change. Um, when we recorded this, so Hannah and I actually met in real life <laughs> um, at Sass Petherick's workshop, Write Yourself Home, Hannah was styling it, um, and I knew bef- even before I met her that I adored her on Instagram, and then when I met her I was like, wow, she's amazing, she's so, she's brilliant, she's just so warm and friendly and <laughs> intriguing and, you know, massive fangirl. I I left uh, Write Yourself Home with quite a lot of girl crushes, basically. (laughs) Um, So, yes, so that's where we originally met. um, And when we recorded this chat, um, it was before she'd announced that she's um, running, she's due to be running some retreats with Elmley Nature, which um, if you don't know Elmley Nature, if you go to Hannah's Instagram, you can um, read all about it there. Um, Anyhow, I'm totally signed up. I, I'm desperate to <laughs> to go hang out with her again. <laughs> um, anyhow, so if you know about said retreat and you're wondering why we didn't chat about it, it's because we recorded the chat before it happened. So that being said, <laughs> if you need a ginormous reminder that just starting your blog can be the start of a profound career change, this one is for you. Hi, Hannah. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. <laughs> For anybody that doesn't know who you are, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your blogging journey so far? Yes, I can. I am Hannah Bullivant. Um, I am a stylist and a blogger. Um, I'm a mum. I live in Kent in England. Um, and my blogging journey started as a creative outlet when I think I was 22. I was just trying to imagine. So like, I've been blogging for over 10 years, which is, whoa. Wow. Um, but yeah, so I had found myself in a um, really quite uninspiring office job, like a uh, grey government quango, civil, <laughs> civil service F, writing policy documents about mobile phone usage. Um, and I was, yeah, so I was having a lot of moments of like, how how have I ended up here? Like, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> So I basically, and there were elements of that job that were good, but um, yeah, I um, felt like I needed to do something creative. I've always been quite creative. And so I started a blog um, just as an outlet, really. And um, because I'm sort of naturally drawn to interiors, I started blogging about that. Um, And that, through a slightly convoluted path, led to me... uh, shooting my own home for an interiors magazine with a photographer who I still work with called Christy. And then that led to us doing that ongoing. So that sort of led to my, basically the blog is what led to my career change. And after I had Frankie, um, when I was 27, I basically decided not to go back to that job and really push out as a stylist and a blogger. And, um, and I haven't looked back since that's a very shortened version. (laughs) (laughs) It's, it's incredible how much we, like blogs can do for us though isn't it like you start you start a blog and you don't necessarily end up becoming a full-time blogger but so many of us credit can, like can really credit our blogs with our entire career yeah what, what was it like at the point when you were like okay I were you on maternity leave yeah I decided not to go back what what was the kind of deciding factor what did that feel like um, I think I was like, I was dreading it with every fiber of my being <laughs> so I tried to go back to this job. Um, it, I had slightly changed jobs by this point um, and had 
yeah, and it it was more interesting. I was doing some public affairs, um, some lobbying in Parliament, and th- those elements of it were quite interesting. But the actual subject that I was working on um, was around pensions, <laughs> and it was I was just like, I don't know, like. I just can't, I couldn't find my passion for it in any way. Um, And I sort of, it was a bit of a flag that I couldn't, yeah, that I, when I was sort of approaching going back to work, this is like, I don't know how many years ago now, seven, seven years ago, nearly eight, seven years ago. Um, I was just, yeah, I was really full of dread about it. And so I was like, I kept, I, I was sort of allowed myself to dream a bit and was like, what if I don't go back to work? And, you know, what would it take? And so we looked, we just sort of, got we we made a spreadsheet I'm I'm a big fan of a spreadsheet oh, and uh, yeah. we were kind of went through and we're like right what are our outgoings and how can, how could we survive um and then what could I bring in and then basically I had I had such a strong motivation to make it work <laughs> so I just kind of went hell for leather mm. um and made it work <laughs> <laughs> how so getting into kind of the nitty gritty you like it's really scary that jumping off point that it is when you're I mean it's exhilarating isn't it because you're like yeah I'm my own boss and I really literally have no limits to what I can achieve but also when you've got a kid that's your limit you can only fit in what you can fit in and it can be really oh, well I found it personally to be a real roller coaster of the highs of oh my god I'm bringing in as much money or more than I bought before and I'm doing it on my own terms and et cetera, et cetera, to, oh my God, my kid is ill. I've got two weeks where I am not earning money. How do you guys manage that? Um, and do you mean, the beginning. yeah, I was going to say, do you mean when I was deciding about not going back or, or now? Well, I guess probably in those early days when you first start, like you've made the decision uh, you've got your plans in place. How yes. to go about kind of hustling for business, et cetera, et cetera. And I actually hate that word hustle, but it kind of is a great way to sum up what I mean. <laughs> yes. Um, so at that point, what, the thing that I was hustling for was real homes. So mm. uh, to shoot for magazines. So we have, we still have a really good track record of generally the houses that we shoot for magazines all go in really nice magazines. And um, so, so I just went on a mission to find, and thankfully, because through the blogging community, I know so many people with beautiful homes. So I basically started to mine that community and was like, can we come and shoot your home? Like, please let me in, probably a bit desperately. Um, and um, yeah, so I just, I just kind of, well, yeah, sorry to use the word. I did, I did hustle and yeah. I did do things that felt scary and a bit vulnerable Um because I had a very strong motivation of not wanting to go back to a nine to five job. Um, And the organization I was working for was a nice organization. And I think that if if it had all gone wrong, they might have had me back in a different capacity. So I slightly had a, um, no, did I have a, did I have a plan B? I'm not sure if I did. I think, I think I was like, I'll temp if I need to, do you know what I mean? I was like, I'll just do, I'll do anything to to, to make it work. But as it, as it happened, a combination of really, really, pushing and being a bit brave yeah. um, and also being extremely thrifty just how we were living as a family as well and um, meant that I never had to go back to that nine to five so yeah fr- from that point it's just kind of got better and better and I've been able to meet my income targets and yeah but it, I mean yeah easy. it is hard though the juggle when you've yeah. got a um, and Dave is freelance as well so that that massively helps yeah. um, but it sometimes can lead to like a bit of a when we like you know if it, it, we, we've had situations before where he's got a big job on I've got a big job on and then both of the kids vomit and you're like shit then it's just yeah it's just kind of talking it out slash arguing it out and like <laughs> making a plan about you know who, who does which bits and can we call on family and uh yeah it isn't but, easy <laughs> I think you're one of the things that it kind of leads us perfectly onto this. One of the things that I think you're really great at is sharing the not easy bits. So I think there's a lot of chat online about authenticity and showing your real self. And I don't know if you saw Carolyn Slow Traveler's um, amazing uh, project where she hacked her own Instagram account. And I did. None of, I mean, I was talking to Jules, this is Jules, about the fact that we both said happy birthday to her on that post, even though we were like, we know that she isn't 22, but I'm too embarrassed to say anything. And I know her face doesn't look quite right. 
but we just accepted it as fact, which is kind of scary. And yeah. how we accept that, I mean, I've gone off onto a tangent, but anyway, it's got me thinking quite a lot about how even I probably, um, I don't know, curate myself a little bit, even on story. But I think that you are one of the only people that I follow that really does say it like it is. Like you will come on and say, I feel really shit today. I feel really tired, et cetera, et cetera. Mm-hmm. This is the reality of... But then you'll also share when you're walking down the street with like amazing twigs in your hand, <laughs> going to do something really glamorous. <laughs> yeah, so share both sides. I think that's awesome. Yeah, I really try to share both sides. So, um, ooh, ooh, I could talk about so many things about this. Where do I start? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, um, Instagram. Yeah, it is. So I don't really do photoshopping. I actually don't know how to do it. So I'm like, I don't do that. And um, I was quite inspired by Carolyn's post, um, just that she she's so uh, cleverly duped us all. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it was, so yeah, and I like how she revealed it as well. I just thought it was quite creative and, you know, and different. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't photoshop, but I am certainly guilty of, you know, curating a gallery and a, a you know a, a very perfect looking gallery yeah. um, for me that's a quite that that's a, a relatively that's a choice that I make um I am a stylist and I do exist in a, in a visual world and I love beautiful things and I, so for me I I love curating a, a you know a gallery of beautifulness and um, but for me what where I need balance and where I love balance and where I love it with other people is when people share their more real side of life on stories. So for me, I, I sort of started to feel a, fall a bit out of love with Instagram. And then when stories was launched, was it like a year ago? I don't yeah. even know. It feels like yeah. it's always been there. And um, I was like, oh my God, I love this. I feel like this is my, this feels really right for me. And um, so, yeah, I, I basically try to share um, both the, the sort of curated loveliness on my gallery versus here's the real life side of, of it. Um, and I am naturally an oversharer um, and I'm naturally a bit of an extrovert. So it is, it's a good platform for me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I, I get, yeah, I, I'm, I feel comfortable, I guess there. Um, I sometimes I do stories and I'm like, was that a bit much? Did I just overshare? <laughs> <laughs> but people, I get like, it doesn't, you know, there's nothing that I've said that hasn't had, like it's like the more of myself that I share, the be- the better. Yeah, Con- yeah, yeah. Connections that I get and the better community and, um, yeah. And I, so the other thing is, is that I I do try and keep my um content helpful slash inspiring as well. So even when I am whinging <laughs> about being <laughs> bone tired, and um, I'm also trying to share what I'm doing to help myself or make you know try to. Um, turn my day around like whether it's so literally just this morning so we uh, we had a really really brutal night with a baby who had his year one one year jabs yesterday um, and is poorly so I'm feeling um really like broken with lack of sleep yeah but even even this morning when I was on stories talking about that I was like so here's what I'm doing to help me feel a bit better about it so I'm gonna get my journal out I'm gonna write down the stuff I'm grateful for I've drank a shitload of water I'm gonna um, you know um, <laughs> These are the things that I know are going to sort of turn my day around for me. Um, so, yes, I guess I'm trying to make it, I'm trying to make that stuff also useful rather than just a whinge fest because I have to, there's a balance for me. And with when I follow other people um, and it's constant negativity, it does end up seeping through. Do you find that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, do. I do. I would agree. And I do think that I naturally, people don't stick around and follow people if they're just going to put out negativity even even yes. if you're just saying I feel really terrible do you have any tips for something that quite that I feel like I'm totally up for that but if someone's just whinging at you I mean Instagram stories is where I go to relax I don't need that kind of <laughs> that kind of yes. stress from other people exactly so yeah there's a to- there's totally a balance isn't there like it's yeah it's not just about and also I think there's a balance in what you share as well so I've been encouraging like I really like Sarah's done a talk to the camera challenge yes. my friend Charlotte from Betty magazine has been encouraging people to do it and I've been encouraging people to do it as well um uh, but I guess there is a balance there um as well so I'm sort of encouraging people to be a bit more honest um and show their faces and you know show a bit more of yourself 
um, to your followers and like how, you know, how, what a great thing, thing is for the community, but also for your business. It mm. is really good. Like people do want to see the person behind the, the brand. Yes. Um, but also you don't owe the internet your vulnerability. Me and Sarah were chatting about this um, as well, about her challenge. Um, you don't have to share your, your, your real deep, dark, hairy, gross, whatever, you know, like, yeah, you, you know, yeah. you could, you can it's there's a balance between honesty and vulnerability I think with um what you choose to share I think Um, that's a really really good point because I I can't remember who I was talking to about this I don't know if it's a podcast episode that's gone out or it's one that I've recorded um but and I can't even remember who it is so this makes me the worst podcaster ever (laughs) I was talking to somebody someday about this about (laughs) (laughs) but we were talking about um yeah, we'll always be honest, but my truth won't always be the whole truth. In that mm. I will never lie. I will never lie. But I won't always say every single truth in my life. And the story that I tell, I'm not gonna t- I'm not gonna give I don't and I, I don't owe anyone that either. I don't yeah. need to tell you every single part of my life to make no. what I do tell you true. Yes. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So I kind of think that everybody has to come to their own sweet spot. And I think it's really, really cool seeing all the people that I follow now talking to camera. I've always been pretty comfortable doing it. Um, but I know that lots of the people that I follow haven't. And even people who I see as huge Instagrammers like Hannah Argyle, I know that she finds it really uncomfortable. And she's been pushing herself to do it lots over the past year, I guess. And yes. it's awesome to see that. But I don't feel like they owe me to keep doing loads of that if they feel really uncomfortable do you know what I mean yeah and and it's also choosing what you you know what what you share so I was chatting with my friend um who's also a very big Instagrammer and freaking out about it (laughs) Um, and I was like you don't have to send you know like I was like what about the the prompts that Sarah's doing or you know what about sharing something with your followers that they might not know and she was like oh that even feels a bit scary and I was like well we'll just start with some tips about your industry then do you know what I mean like it it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to even be very personal if if you don't want it to be um so yeah but but I think any sort of putting your face to camera is is a good thing and I think that lots of particularly women really shy away from it Mm. or they they only do it when they're sort of made up and yeah yeah and stuff and it's like so I think there's I I really like I I find that Instagram stories has helped the platform feel a bit more diverse and real and we're seeing a bit more real womanhood and or something I don't yeah. know I don't, no, I I don't agree know with that. <laughs> um <laughs> I know I completely agree with you I think you see um a wider look a more holistic look at what uh, people that we follow yes which is great I think it, and, yes. and you're really really good at you're really good at that so I think because the because of how you are on Instagram stories I I honestly think that that gives other people um permission to do the same so you're you know 20,000 followers or whatever how, how I don't know you've got lots but anyway all of those people and everybody else that you reach on stories which as we know is broader than just your followers um are being given permission to come on and be real and honest and not be fully made up and talk about the negative parts of life as well as the positive and yeah yeah I think it yes is, it's a really good thing and actually that leads me to something I wanted to ask you about because back in it was before January I think it was just before was it in January that you released the January book um I think so did I did before? I I can't no, remember. it was. It, would, it wouldn't have been before because I'm not that organised. It will have been in the- <laughs> <laughs> which I, my husband and I did the January book, and it was just amazing. I'll link to it in the show notes. Um, but you said something that I found was really interesting. It was just a bit of a throwaway comment, and you were like, "Oh, I'm really excited. This is how many." And I can't remember how many people had downloaded it at that point, but you just released it, and you'd said, "Say, I don't know, 300 people had downloaded it," and you said it, and then you were like, "Oh, I don't know if you're supposed to say your stats. Is that a bit naff?" And but you yes. were sort of like, "I don't really care," <laughs> and I loved that because that yeah. is something that comes up on this podcast again and again and again. Is that people, um, and I even get messages that like people would DM me and and ask me the question about, you know, you've been talking about what's a big blogger or what's a medium blogger. What does that actually mean? Tell me what the stats should be. And I think it's because 
people don't say. They don't say, oh, I'm really pleased with this post. It did really well. It got this many. And I, I don't actually think you have to do that. But I think it's super cool when someone does. Yes. Oh, that's getting really vulnerable for people, isn't it? Sharing right. stats. That's like a really close, closely guarded secret in our industry, isn't it? Like, I think it is, um, yeah. <laughs> but I think I'm all up for it, actually. Same with money as well. Um, so while wow, we're going for the really big, big ones, yeah. <laughs> like, I, I, I always am up for, I think it's really important to talk about things like stats and money and what a brand has offered to pay you versus what that brand has offered to pay your may, yeah. <laughs> who's, who, you know, things like that. I think there's a real lack of industry standards, I guess. Um, so, but I'm, I'm, um, I guess this comes with potentially the oversharing thing, but I, yeah, I think I'm always fairly o- open about, or I try to be fairly open about things like that. Um, I just think it helps, helps the industry be a, a bit of a better place. Yeah, I agree. Um, so Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, that would the, the um, January book downloads, like, like I occasionally sort of create opt-ins for the blog and, um, and up until that point, maybe 40 or 50 people had downloaded them. And I was always really thrilled with that. Yeah. It's now actually the January book has been downloaded nearly a thousand times. Wow. So I can, I can, I can say that, but it's, so it's 900 and something, something. That's amazing. So yeah, that completely, it utterly, yeah, it's really blown me away actually. <laughs> so, um, I, yeah, so that was just a real like, woohoo. I <laughs> really didn't expect it to go down like that. But do you think the success of that came from, because the reason I downloaded it is because you talked about it on stories. You talked about how you and Dave do the January book and you explained it and then I saw you going away to it was Elmley wasn't it and doing it and I think that whole story behind it was really compelling yes definitely um I authentic it didn't seem like you booked all this so that you could plug something that was just what you were doing yes it's it yeah so it was I guess it was a really good example of like I, I guess accidentally soulful marketing. So mm. we, this is, a, this is a process and a thing that we do every January, including the bit where we go away to do it together. Um, and when I've talked about it in previous years, I've always had loads of messages from people being like, what is this January book? Like it, where is, where, where have you got it from? And I was like, oh, it's just a thing we do in a notebook. And then, so this year I was like, oh, I am going to, I'm going to put something together. Um, and because I'm passionate about it and because it's led to some such incredible stuff for me and Dave and our marriage and our work, um, it's really easy for me to talk about it very passionately. Mm. And I think, yeah, and on stories. So yeah, it was, yeah. And I think when, when someone's really passionate about something, it's always, I think it always is very helpful, I guess. Um, Dave afterwards was like, maybe you should have just charged like one pound for it. Oh my God. (laughs) I was like, like, well, I just really think about that, but, um, you should do, yeah, see, you should do like a value added with the January book, like maybe add a Facebook group, and then charge even twenty pounds for it. Kind of rejig it, make it a bit more. I'm totally gonna yeah do that. So I'll still I'll I'll, I'll still keep the core offering free because I want it to be. I love how how much it's helped people. Yeah. Um, but yes, me like I, I'm trying to be a bit more business minded about it and think what can I do that's like the next level up from yeah. it. Like yes, exactly. So yeah, maybe a Facebook group or or something like or maybe maybe even a printed thing. Although I don't think there's any money in printed things. No. But um. Yes, so yeah um but yeah no it's been really amazing and actually the thing that's shocked me most I guess that it really shocked me I guess it's the the thing that people have come to me most about the January book oh my god that made no sense um (laughs) is is, um, it's actually how it's helped their marriages so that, that that the comments that I'm getting from people who have done the January book is oh my husband isn't normally a talker and this has been amazing and we've talked about stuff that I didn't think we'd ever be able to talk about yeah. um I would I tell that, oh that's good you, uh, will you shall I explain what the January book yeah, is actually, yeah. Yeah. Just, <laughs> <laughs> sometimes I forget that there are case, listeners <laughs> hi guys <laughs> <laughs> yeah, hi. uh yeah so in case you're listening and like what is what are they talking about um it, it's a planning and review process um and it's a that, that me and my husband do every January and we have done for like I think, I think this was the ninth year. Um, and it's, we sort of do it in categories. It's changed quite a bit over the years, how we do it. Um, so I think the price, the one that we've, we've settled on now is, is pretty good, but like we'll review work, our marriage, how we parent, um, and even like lifestyle stuff. Like that's kind of the reason that we decided to stop eating meat and dairy, things like that. Um, and yeah, so 
we, I basically t- turned it into a little printable and a guide to help people come up with their own categories and like come up with a word for the year and put it on my blog and then was re- a bit blown away by the response it had. Um, so yes, yeah, so that's what the January book is. <laughs> and it's such a simple, it is so simple, but it's, it's so brilliant. I mean, simple in the nicest way. It's not simple like, oh, I can do yeah, it myself. No, I so. would never have thought of it. Um, and Ollie was so, my husband was so into it. He like, it was brilliant. We had the nicest time and we were, um, actually away that weekend for something else anyway. Um, and we just thought, Oh, let's just, and I, I printed it out and was like, I kind of want us to do this. What do you think? And he was like, yeah, okay. And we got into it and he was so into it. And when we came back, really? it was like the following weekend, he was like, oh, should we do the January book on Saturday? <laughs> ah, that's amazing. Yeah. I love you. Yeah. 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 We've, yeah, we've absolutely loved it. And we're going to get it out again um, because we're moving and kind of everything's changing. So he has said, I think we should redo our January book. What do you think? <laughs> That's amazing. I mean, me and Dave, it works out really well for us because our wedding anniversary is July. So we get, so we do like another mid year review. So that's one thing that I'm planning on doing is I'm going to do a version in July, encouraging other people to go back to their January book and just check check against it. And, um, but yeah, it's really worth redoing. And like, I guess the January book isn't going to be, I think just doing it and coming up with your big life goals Mm. is an incredibly powerful thing. But in terms of making it more uh, useful for your sort of everyday life, it is, it, it's nice to check in with it and, and put, put stuff in place and make plans and then go back and, oh, is that plan working? Or do we need to scrap that all together or put a whole new thing in? And it, you know, it, I guess it works best as like a living yeah. thing rather than just this thing you do one time in the beginning of the year and then forget about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's brilliant. So has that, leading on from that, has that, kind of guided your because you've talked about kind of soulful marketing and you are like you can tell the type of person you are you're very soulful and um how has that guided your business goals because I know that both you and Dave are freelance and now you've got another baby it's like a hot it it's a whole different ball game isn't it how is that guy guiding your future business kind of wise um, well, it's sort of, that is like an on, that's like the question of the moment. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, um, yeah, so I always find that year after having a baby to be, I mean, obviously incredibly hard. And I mean, he's, he's actually just turned one. So, mm. um, it's longer than that. And I, and I am feeling physically completely depleted, but also I find it a very creative time as well. Um, and I, I've realized that that's not, unique to me mm. I think there's something about having a baby and literally cr- creating yes, life yeah. <laughs> that releases creativity in a lot of women um and also there's something about having having a child and you wanting to actually deal with some of the baggage you've carried around and wanting to be a better human and a, and a more confident mm. human for your child that makes you want to actually go for these things that you've been thinking about going for so I've I've sort of did I've, I went through that once with Frankie and then again when Auden was born. Um, so I've been doing basically since he was born, a lot of like thinking and pondering and journaling and like thinking, you know, and, and I think, yeah, I, I do want to do something which combines my love of interiors, um, and my background in interiors with stuff like the January book and the stuff I talk about, um, a lot about sort of, managing mental health Mm. stuff and anxiety and things like that and even marriage as well like that that's in the January book the thing the subject that I was contacted about more than anything else was Mm. marriage and that's actually something that I feel like I'd quite like to talk about a bit more because we were 20 when we got married like complete complete children but it's I do feel like um we've ended up creating an, an amazing thing for us and it's not perfect but yeah through processes like the January book it's kept as close. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, I'm sort of, there's so many things I could talk about. But <laughs> yeah, so I'm, I'm trying to, yeah, because sort of, I've re- recently just redone my website yeah. um, and I've come, I used to have my HannahBullivant.com was totally separate to SeasonStitches.com, which was like my lifestyle blog. It's now all together. Both of those point to HannahBullivant.com. Um, and that's because I'm trying to bring all of the things that I do under one roof. Um, so it was like an important act for me to, to just have, I just have one website yeah. now. Um, and the tagline of that website is soulful living. So that's the thing as well that I'm trying to bring all of this stuff underneath. So it's like interiors, but I'm not an interiors, um, 
it, well, I'm not a conventional interiors yeah. blogger, so I'm not, I probably am not going to be doing trend forecasts or like things like that. But I do feel really passionate about the power of home and how important it is that your home is a sanctuary for you. And uh, yeah, especially when you've got kids, but even, you know, definitely not just when you've got kids. Um and also, I want to be talking a lot more about stuff like the January book, and I'm going to be releasing something in the middle of the year uh, as well, like a sort of you know, plan B, part two January yeah. book um, as well. So does that answer that yeah, question? Yeah, it does. Yeah, but it's super exciting. It, and I love I love how you've described kind of just tying everything. It, I mean, I was basically nodding the whole way through because uh Anais my little girl turns one next month and I completely like yeah high-fiving to all of those points I felt so creative throughout pregnancy so creative afterwards and so wanted to do something important whatever that and when I say important I don't mean important I don't know I I don't want to run for that you'd be the next prime minister but important to me I want to do something that she's proud of and do something more than what I was just doing and yeah it makes you braver doesn't it it? I think it makes you braver (laughs) so yeah because yeah if you've had a baby and and I don't want to cut out anybody who hasn't had a baby it's very it's really hard to talk about anything to do with women's fertility because I always feel like uh you can be offending someone but um yeah you don't have to have had a baby to become this brave but for me and clearly for you as well like it it was a very profound um change change I guess and yeah so my and when you were saying bringing everything into one website I'm doing the same um because Mm. yeah so I've changed I've changed my handles on social media now and I just want everything to be in one place and I want to be able to bring everything together um all the, because you do end up doing lots of different things, don't you? It's that classic, you know, Emma Gannon talks about it, the multi-hyphenated, uh, guess what yes, we're all. exactly. <laughs> we are all that. We are all that now. And yeah. sometimes I think when you've got children and if you're living with anxiety or any kind of mental health, you do just need some calm. Yes. And I think even having your web, just one website can help your kind of quiet your mind a little bit I don't know if I've gone a bit woo there but (laughs) no no it's that's 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 sort of what I meant by saying it was like a symbolic Mm. act to bring those things all under one thing um and underneath that let's see if I can if I can articulate this underneath that is an understanding that actually what I do what you do is is Mm. you yeah so I've I've realized that my brand is Mm. me and like and actually that I I don't think I, I I don't think I felt good enough for that before we yeah. and that's why I had to keep them but I, I feel a bit I'm in a, in a I'm in a better place with accepting with self-acceptance to be able to say that actually yes you know I don't have a single thing that I do because I am what mm, I do yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. and being com- confident enough to just flip and sit with that because I've tortured myself oh but what is my yeah. thing you know what what is my big I don't feel like I have one single big dream or one single thing that I do I'm interested in a few different things but I do find it I found I, I yeah there's a le- there's a bit of there's a level of peace that I've I guess I've been I've been able to put them all under one website and also under the same tagline yeah. so um yeah we'll see we'll see how that do goes you think, do you think that that held you back that feeling of I'm not good enough um yes totally that's part of the sort of inner work I guess that I've been doing um since having Auden actually um yeah figuring out what what I do I mean for a long time I didn't even call myself a stylist because I was like well I haven't studied mm. styling and you know I, I I came to styling through an unconventional route so a lot of stylists will will assist other stylists um and do a lot of that before they can go out on their own or, or they get agents or whatever I literally I just like sidled in right at the top I've not really done any assisting <laughs> at all I literally just took some did some styling I worked with a photographer and and was able to sell those photos to a magazine and it's literally just gone from there that led to uh being asked to do events and style still life for brands so even though that's the thing that's that's how I earn my money and that's my day job and I've done it a lot um I still have major imposter syndrome Mm. about that and so that's like a a pro like a constant process to, to to um kind of yeah deal with those 
very unhelpful How thoughts. Do you um, uh, like, do you do you kind of CBT it and stop your thinking uh, when the negative thoughts start to happen? Um, or? No, I don't know whether I do. I don't stop my thinking. So I am um, a big fan of journaling. You or I used to call it a diary. So I have I've had one since I was a little girl, um, and used it kind of on and off since then. Um, but most recently, as I've been doing a lot of pondering and thinking, I've been using writing in my journal a lot. Um, so that's possibly the single biggest thing that, that has always been very helpful for me. Um, so I call my, I'm an external processor. Yeah. <laughs> so that's like, um, yeah, I, I, I'm not very good just if I just sit alone with my thoughts, they tend to go become a bit irrational and loom. And um, so I need to either talk them out or write them out. And I've literally always been like that. So, so with all of that stuff, with all of those feelings of imposter syndrome or, or not feeling good enough or um not knowing what I, you know what I want to do then I write it out <laughs> sometimes reams and reams and reams and reams um and also the other the, the thing that I've added in more recently to my journaling um and actually this is since I had Auden is affirmations ah, yeah. so um, I found them like yeah really really life-changing um so yeah so as well as just doing that kind of brain dump thing of just ex- you know processing out outside of myself the thoughts in my mind which in itself is very useful and um, I then will do some um write down the stuff I'm grateful for I've been doing that for now for I think maybe a couple of years um, and then I'll also write down some affirmations um, and I was a bit skeptical about it and um I can understand why people listening might be like mm, I don't know maybe I yeah. roll it um but I I had a completely life-changing um, experience based on affirmations. So I did hypnobirthing with Auden after a really hideous birth yeah. with Frankie. Um, and I believe, um, I still have this belief, not, not a strong at all that I'm, I'm quite sensitive mm. to pain. So I was like, I just, I'm not going to have nice births. Like not all women can have nice births. Like, you know, I, I, I do feel pain and I'm cool with that. And I'm cool with, you know, getting an epidural or whatever. My sister-in-law at the time was a hypnobirthing teacher. So she was, so we, we did some classes with her and the more I learned about it, about how our bodies work um, and how, how connected our minds are to our bodies. I was like, oh, I'm going to give it a go. Um, and basically we, with birth, I, I did a lot of birth affirmations about feeling calm, confident and safe that my, I know what I'm doing, that my baby knows what it's doing. I'm focusing on the breath. And I ended up having a super calm I mean it ended up being very powerful um yeah. home birth with Auden and actually he was back to back oh, wow. and, big. and so I was yeah so and that's me go, going from thinking oh, I'll just go to hospital and yeah. have, have an epidural to having um a, a home birth with a baby who was large yeah. and back to back um and that's because I literally just immersed myself in yeah. these beliefs about myself um and I had this, uh, the Calm Birth School do some affirmate birth affirmations, and I literally had them playing through my entire birth, my entire labor. Um, so my poor birth team, my poor midwife, <laughs> and poor Dave. Um, but I just was, I just, I was literally hanging on them, um, and it totally worked. So I was, so after I had that experience, I was like, hmm, how can I apply this to other areas of my life? So I, I feel like I'm actually a bit evangelical about them because I'm like, you can literally change, <laughs> like if you immerse yourself deeply enough, and if you write it down and listen to it, and you know that, then you can you can literally like change how your body feels pain. Yeah. Like it's literally like, it's I incredible. Agree. I had the same so, experience, never thought that I, it well, not the same experience in birth, but that I honestly would never have, if somebody said to me about affirmations before I was pregnant, before I gave birth, I would have been like, well, yeah, nice, but I don't think it can change my life. But I started off with the yes mum affirmation cards. And I think if you see my Instagram throughout my pregnancy, like, there was constant affirmation card pictures and it, Honestly, and yes. I had um, a planned home birth, which ended up in an emergency C-section. But um, but it was yeah. it was still incredibly positive. Like I have the most positive feelings yeah. about the whole process. Wow. And it was it was the affirmation yeah. cards. And then afterwards, my husband bought me the um, the Yes Mum Boss cards. And so I look at them every ah. single day, and they honestly, I think they're amazing. I, I would, if anybody's eye rolling, I would definitely. I'm going to stick a link to the affirmation in my yes. profile in the show notes and yeah just check them out because they're so cheap as well even if even if you're eye rolling at them yes. they're really pretty they'll make great instagram props just try them <laughs> yes absolutely yes 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 and they're such a good starting point so i've I, i've kind of written my own so i've got a note on my phone where i write my oh, favorite nice. affirmations so 
Um, so we were talking about imposter syndrome, for example. So if I'm thinking like, oh my God, I'm not good enough. You know, I, I'll, I can go to my like a note on my phone and read them. I'm actually going to record them oh, in my yes. voice so that I can listen to them. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll be like, you know, I'm confident in my styling or like I deserve to be well paid for my styling work or I'm shrewd when deciding which jobs to take on yeah. or, you know, I'm willing to take risks to go far in my industry. So they are a bit cheesy and a bit woo, but it does really work. And it's like, you just reassure yourself actually, you know, it's, so that was a really big long answer massive tangent so how do no, I do I, wow. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it because I love hearing about I mean I'm a real birth pervert in that I could just listen to people's birth stories all day and I love your birth story yes. because mm. um it gives me a lot of hope for my because I you know a, a straight after my cesarean and they were like you're a great candidate for be back and I thought at the time well if I can't have a home birth then I don't really well, I don't really want to bother um and that's because mm-hmm. people tell you that you're not allowed to do this that and the other and I I remember throughout my pregnancy I was very very passionate about birth rights and all the rest of it I had a, an amazing doula I had some really good role models that um and say actually no you don't have to be induced there are other options so push back and it's the same with home birth I I can still have try for another home birth if I want to um yeah. anyway I've gone off onto a tangent there because I'm thinking very much about that because obviously if I have another baby then I, I'm because I'm moving I won't be in the same place and where I was they really supported home birth and you just never know do you like I know yeah you just yeah. never know so that's at the forefront of my mind at the moment so yeah so that's a very long and rambly bit <laughs> no that sounds very exciting it sounds exciting very yeah. exciting indeed. <laughs> um but yeah I think it, I guess it sounds like you've given yourself the best possible start like I my birth with Frankie I did like a little bit of hypnobirthing but um I was quite poorly with her so it was really um yeah it was pretty traumatic but it sounds you you, you uh, yeah if you approach what I'm trying to say is you're already much further ahead than me <laughs> if you know like when, like and the fact that you're even thinking about it and yeah I mean yeah but I could talk about too. birth that it's almost like a whole other podcast well I keep thinking that because I'm like I just want to talk about birth but actually some of the people that are listening to this podcast might not want to hear about birth but hey guys <laughs> if you do yeah. then both of us have our own birth stories on our blogs and we can I will link that in the show notes so you can go <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> I love that you called yourself a birth server <laughs> as well. That's incredible. I can't believe I even went there. Um, yeah. <laughs> I want to quickly go back. I'm very conscious of time, but I want to quickly ask you, apart from obviously the, the things that we've talked about in terms of, you know, anxiety and mental health and imposter syndrome, which can be a real bugger, were there any other real stumbling blocks no. for you kind of throughout your career? Um, hmm, stumbling blocks. I mean, I mean, those are massive um, ones. To be fair, to overcome. Yeah, I think I think the ones mm. you said are probably the big ones. So, like managing managing kids and a dream career is is a big one. And I'm really I'm really determined to make it work. Um, so a lot of like when I'm employed as a stylist, um, to, to style, um, products for a brand, for example, that's still quite a traditional industry. Um, but I, I, so I, a lot of the initial negotiation at the moment, cause I'm still breastfeeding Auden is, um, I'll, I'll need, uh, my baby will be with joining me at, for some parts of the day. So it's that, it's that sort of thing. It's like trying, it's, it's being brave enough to still go for the work that I want to go for, but negotiate how I manage yeah. Auden in that, yeah. if you know what I mean. So um, and also just generally the fact that me and Dave are both freelance is very parent friendly. I mean, not, not always. Occasionally there is that like train wreck where we're both got jobs on and both kids are sick, but mostly it's amazing and that we can share and balance. Like he's downstairs with Auden at the moment and he did the school run this morning. Um, and yeah, it means that we can both support each other to follow the creative sort of, sort of industry passions that we have with our jobs and um, but also be around a lot with our family um so that's an ongoing process as well that's something I want to talk about a bit more but um yeah I think coming up against there's still 
maybe one of the big stumbling blocks is the sort of cultural expectations mm-hmm. of, around mums and dads as well. Um, you know, me and Dave have to work, even though we're pretty progressive in how we share childcare, we still have to work very hard at not uh, slipping into those cultural norms and the expectations that, oh, if your child is sick, then it's automatically yes. the mum that gets phoned from school and the mum, the mum that goes yeah. to collect the kid. And then it's the mum that, that takes the hit on their work. It's not the dad. Um or like the other day on, on Monday, I've been, I've been feeling really shattered and overwhelmed just baby wise. Um, and, uh, I was like, Oh, I've got, I'm going to go and hang out with a friend and do something creative. Um, and the way I even spoke about it with Dave was, Oh, that will just mean that you have to have audience. Yeah. Is that okay? <laughs> and, um, you know, and I was like, he wouldn't yeah. say that yeah. to me, <laughs> you know, it's like, so, um, yeah. So I guess that, that, that is a, a really big challenge actually, um, is, is, you know, coming up against those cultural norms and Dave's industry, he's, he's a director and a photographer, but in the directing industry, it's, um, incredibly patriarchal and old fashioned. And, uh, you know, the guys are expected to be there for very long days. It, it's thought of nothing for, for you to, for them to go away yeah. for months at a time. Um, it's really not family friendly. And so Dave, in a lot of ways is pushing, he's like pushing against the stream yeah. every day in, in his, his attempt to be home and, and not follow the, like, it's a very laddie culture as well. Like it's really, I don't know. It's, it, yeah. Um, so they, they have been the challenges, I guess, for both of us, um, trying to parent equally. <laughs> um, and it, uh, yeah, I mean, from my point of view, from looking at, from following you online, you just are such an inspiration. You're doing such an amazing job. You've certainly, yeah, and I don't mean this to sound like crazy fangirly, but you've definitely changed my, I just want to say life, but that feels a bit like dramatic. But <laughs> <Whoa. laughs> well, you definitely like shifted my perspective on things for this year, um, for my marriage and my business, and definitely, you know, that's quite a lot of responsibility to put on you. I'm so sorry, and also you made me rethink. No, it's incredible. What an honor, genuinely. <laughs> you made me rethink um, my hatred of Kent as well, just for yeah. Oh just yes, it. it's so funny because on. Um, so I can't remember what it was. It was uh, in February. I was at um, Sass Petherick's amazing write, write Yourself Home. I guess it's kind of a retreat workshop. It's amazing. And Hannah was there styling and it's so beautiful. And you can see on my Instagram, I've got some of the pictures. They're incredible. Um, and I was talking to you that day about, and I think I, I, we, I was talking to the group about the fact that I have this very funny thing about not moving back to Kent and that come and I worked out where it had come from and you had you had left before the end of the day but at the very end of the day I switched on my phone and we'd had an offer on our on our flat and I was like oh it felt really magical like oh my god this feels like this feels like it means something and I don't know if that's just because the day in itself is just incredibly magical but it definitely made me think oh I'm going to start looking at places in Kent maybe I mean we're not we we've bought a place in Brighton but it definitely made me think more than twice about yeah maybe I could move back to Kent I mean Brighton and Kent are similar I mean Brighton's obviously super super cool but both of them are sort of coastal and you know you're still you're still commutable to London and um yeah that's exciting I hadn't realized you'd bought your well, we've, yeah, we've offered on it, and I don't think you're allowed to say you've bought it until you've, we haven't exchanged. But we move in like two weeks' time. Oh my god, and you've not exchanged yet? I'm, I'm oh, not looking forward terrible. to this process. It's terrible. This is my second time doing this process, and my husband is an estate agent, and it's still terrible. <laughs> oh but it's, I mean, it's fine. It just gets done. Oh. It's very. I, that's what yeah. they say, isn't it? It's more stressful than having a baby or getting married, but. It just gets done. And you just yeah. have to zen out throughout the whole thing. In fact, affirmations relating to house buying would be very, very helpful. <laughs> yeah, I just write some. You could write your own. I'm a yeah, big fan of writing your own. Um, and also, I keep meaning to write a post about managing moving stress as well. I need to. We, I could talk to you about that separately. But yeah, affirmations and having small small corners of calm. I can highly recommend keeping certain spaces and areas as beautiful spaces that you can kind of retreat to and, and keep feeling like you so that it's not all yes. a complete <laughs> shit hole, basically. That's a really, really good idea. <laughs> and on that note, um, where can everybody find you online? 
So now I have, um, I'm known as both HannahBullivan.com and SeasonStitches.com, um, but both of those will point to the same place now after like two <laughs> years of work. And um, you're on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. Cool. I'll link to it all in the show notes. Thanks for listening to what she said. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please think about leaving me a five-star rating and a review if you have time. This really helps other people find the podcast and means that Apple don't hide me in their vaults. If you fancy joining my small but perfectly formed bunch of podcast fans for chit chat on Facebook, head to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash what she said podcast and come and join us. Yeah.